So with that, Molly. Hello. I'm on. Okay, hello. Every time I start out, I will kind of explain a little bit about myself so that you kind of know what you're up against for the next four hours. This is going to be a great, long, okay, you're looking at each other like, is that really going to be four hours? Just kidding. It's really more like 45 minutes. So it's going to go by in like angel time. I love, love, love speaking here. It's such an honor every time I get to come to this location because it feels so wonderful here. I've made so many amazing connections and there's so much light and love that uh, is spread through this location. And so myself being able to be a part of that, I'm just, it's, it's truly an honor. So, so you know a little bit about myself. I am the creator of a global radio show called Violet Wisdom Radio. I have connected with people in Korea, in Australia, in England, all over the world. It's very amazing how when you send your love and light out to the world, how other people connect with your light that are like-hearted individuals that want to hear your message. I also have uh, two books that I've written that talk about beginning your walk of truth and also about becoming an earthly angel. That's about spreading love and light out into the world. Hello, Joan, I see you, hi, hello. Just looking at someone. Um, so a lot of the other things that I do is I do workshops and I do classes and I do inspirational speaking uh, engagements. And what I love to do is help individuals raise their vibration. I'll talk about that in a little bit. And I also love to infuse your soul with joy and love. And the reason for that is we are all a spark of the divine. And what anyone has ever told you in your life that is the opposite of that. Hello, Angela. Um, what anyone has told you that's opposite of that is not the truth of you. And so one of the things I want to talk about again more today is about releasing these belief structures that are really not the truth of the soul so that you can see your inner brilliance, step into who you came here to be in this lifetime, spread that out into the world. That is what we're all asked to do is basically return to the essence of love while our feet walk upon this earth. And once we do that and we work on ourselves and we love ourselves, then we look beyond ourselves and we say, oh my gosh, there are so many people that I can spread this love to. There are so many individuals that I can assist here. I just want to be a light, be a beacon, be a lighthouse. And so that's one of the passions of my heart is to let everyone know that I don't care who you've been and I don't care what happened yesterday or the day before. It's right here in this moment that matters. And then you can start looking forward into the future with new eyes. We've all had pathways and we've all been different places that we've done things, made mistakes, but that makes us who we are. That makes us stronger. And a lot of these situations that we've gone through, a lot of these experiences that we've experienced here become this wisdom that we carry within our heart that has all these different layers that brings forth wisdom that we can spread and, and give our message to other individuals. And you can say, I have an experience similar to yours. This is what happened to me. I made it through it. I hope this information helps you. These are all these kind of pieces of our life journey puzzle, and that's what's called the life purpose mission, and that's what's called our sacred journey. We can also use the words living intentionally, which is the theme for this month, and I'll explain to you what living intentionally means to me. Uh, living intentionally is placing an intention every day when I get out of bed in the morning. The moment my eyes open up and I'm like, wow, I'm breathing, I'm here, thank you. This is an amazing gift. And how can I, with intention, with positive focus, how can I make a difference here in the world? Whether I just make a small change one day by smiling at someone on the street, or whether I make a big difference by creating a radio show that gives people information and wisdom of what they needed to hear specifically on that day. So all of us can do so many different things to 
create a positive intention here on this earth. Another way that you can live with intention is not only when you leave your house, but even before you leave, place the intention of going, what am I gonna wear today? Like, what I have on is intentional. I have on shoes that have flower essence in them. I have a mandala shirt on. I wear clothes that are high vibrational clothing because I want to allow myself to feel light and bright and wonderful and beautiful. And when I feel that way, then I emit that out into the world. People can feel my energy. Animals can connect with me. Other individuals can connect with me. We are here to create miracles and magic. And there's not one person that can say to me, miracles don't occur, Molly, that's just not a truth. It's just something that's written in pages yellowed by time. That's not true because I experience miracles absolutely every single day. Whether I connect with some magical animal encounter or whether I happen to actually happen to save a life or save an animal, there's all sorts of different ways that you can create miracles. Another way of creating this living intentionally is by actually really being in the present moment. And what this is, is a gift to you. It is the biggest gift I think you can give yourself, is when you allow yourself to release those chains that you may have placed upon your heart from things that you've done in the past, and you just say, those things just made me stronger. And now that I have been illuminated on what I don't want, I'm going to allow myself the gift of focusing on what I do want. And those are the intentions that I'm going to place from here, this moment forward, and ahead. One of the great books that I've read, and a lot of you probably have read that, is called The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. If you haven't, I suggest that you check that out and look it up. It's very easy read. It's full of wisdom about staying in the present moment and the gift that you give yourself by allowing yourself to remember your breath when you're in a situation, when you have started to zoom out of your heart and you get anxiety and looping thoughts and you're traveling down a pathway that just doesn't serve your soul, if you allow yourself that gift of remembering to just breathe, that's one of the gifts of staying in the present moment. Another thing that happens when you give yourself the gift of staying in the present moment and living intentionally is that you prevent insanity. And what I mean by that is, when we zoom into the future with what ifs or what about or this could happen and how about that, you actually start filling in the blanks with things that haven't even occurred yet. And mostly you're filling in the blanks with negative intentions instead of positive visions or aspirations. And what happens when you, when you start projecting your energy or your thoughts into the future is that fear a lot of times doesn't just creep in, it arrives like a freight train. And then we realize that many times fear is the great thief. It steals the dreams that have been placed right upon your doorstep. So perhaps you have been wanting to go on a special trip or a new job or just starting today from this day forward with your new life and then you start saying but what if what if this or what if that and that starts bringing in doubt and any time you have doubt that's the fear vibration so i want to talk about vibrations for a moment here and i want to break it down so it's like so absolutely simple we have the love vibration or the fear vibration there really are just two vibrations. If you allow yourself to live on the love vibration, those are the things that you feel unconditional love. It feels sunshiny and bright. Everything is in the flow. You've had days like that where you're like, man, everything was just so amazing today. And the reason is, is because you place that intention to have a day full of miracles. If you, however, get up and you say, this day is gonna be just like any other day, and it's gonna be like the day before, and nothing's gonna change, then the universe responds to that, and it says, okay, make sure nothing changes for this person, or even make it worse, because they're creating that. Because we can't have it both ways. 
You either can create an amazing day or you can't. And I'm just telling you that we're all amazing, powerful creators. So I'm asking you to honor your journey by placing these intentions to focus on the positive instead of focusing on the negative. It really is actually a way of you just reprogramming your life. Just allowing yourself the gift to say, I'm going to honor my journey here. I'm going to release all the belief systems that have been placed upon me, that things have to be difficult, that people are this way, or society is that way, or things have to always be like this, they'll never change. That's all on the fear vibration. If you allow yourself to focus on the love and the positive vibration, you can go, everyone can change, and that's an absolute fact, because we are different than we were five minutes ago. That's an absolute fact. So when people say to you, you're not going to change, someone isn't going to change, I ask you to honor your own journey and find your own truth in that and realize that everyone can change. So I want to talk about change for a moment and how we can assist ourselves and other people. One of the biggest things that um, will lower your vibration and make you feel bad without you even realizing it is when you start judging what other people are doing wrong instead of focusing on what you're doing right. And I'll say that again. If you allow yourself to focus on what you're doing right instead of what other people are doing wrong, you will be amazed at how your days will change. I guarantee that 100%. When I stopped judging what other people are doing in the world, I turned off the TV. I watch only selective programming that involves puppies and kittens. No, I'm just kidding. But I mean, really, really positive programming. OK, so a lot of it does involve pu puppies and kittens. But um, I watch programming that lights me up, that infuses my soul with hope and faith for humanity. I turn off the news and those kind of actions on programming where they're fear-based where they're completely sending out transmissions nonstop about nothing's going to change, or not only things are changing, but they're changing for the worse. This is getting really bad, or that's horrible, or all of this war over in this area, or that. I'm going to ask you to allow yourself the gift of being a beacon of light. And we can always make a positive difference. And here is what I ask if you're going to watch the news that when you're looking at shows like that and you're immediately starting to go, oh my gosh, in this area, and oh, those people doing that, instead, send them love. Have this positive vision of all these individuals focusing on the positive as well. If we send love, and this is that love vibration, if we allow ourselves to focus on the positive and just love people for who they are, and if someone's going through a difficult time in front of you, one of the wonderful things you can say is, I'm just going to love you through this. Can you imagine if that happened to you when you are going through one of your difficult times in your life and if someone just said, I'm just going to love you through this, the power that that does, instead of saying, yeah, I wish you wouldn't have made that decision or why did you do this or how could you have done that, that's the other person judging you. That's the other person placing judgment on you, and that's not your responsibility to take that on. Your responsibility is to, when you see something in front of you that perhaps is unjust, or needs correction, or is negative, send that situation those people love. And you can do it so simply as you just light up the light in your heart, and you send the intention to send love to any area. I talk about energy a lot. I can do angel reading sessions with people in Australia or Canada or anywhere around the world. And the reason why I can do that without having people right in my presence is because of energy. So we can connect with energy anywhere in the world, and we can also send loving energy to anywhere in the world. And that's why I'm saying to you, allow yourself to give someone the gift of love instead of looking at someone in a negative light. So let's say someone's traveling through a difficult experience. I just did an intuitive fair down in Burnsville, um, was it yesterday? Yesterday. 
And I had a woman sitting in front of me who her um, brother was going through a really difficult time and had caused the family a lot of pain and grief. And she was actually going through a lot of medical uh, issues because she was sending all of her energy to the situation that her brother was creating in the family. But what that means is she's judging all this, the things he's creating to learn through. Instead of just allowing herself to be an observer and say, that's interesting that he's creating those things to learn through. I know I created different experiences. And so because she's placing all of her energy, giving it all away to a problem, to a negative, to a fear, instead of sending love, which always comes right back to you, she was experiencing a lot of health problems. And I said, I'm going to ask you to do this. Imagine that your brother is standing in an amazing, huge sunflower field. And have this vision, instead of holding him, this, him in this space like he's a problem, or my family's crazy, or all these people are doing this, put whoever in a sunflower field and have them tilting their heads towards the sun have that vision that they are looking towards the sun. They will change. They will see the power of the positive someday. It allows you to stay in your positive energy and in your heart, and it allows other people to be able, that are going through a difficult experience, to feel your love and your light. That's way better, because you can't have it both ways. So let's say we send out, we can send out transmissions, and we can say, you know, I want this wonderful job to come in front of me, and I'm really wanting all these wonderful things to happen. And then all of a sudden you switch and you go, nothing good ever happens to me. My family is unlucky. I've never had anything good happen to me. You can't have it both ways. Here's the love vibration, here's the fear. If you can allow yourself to just focus on what you want instead of what you don't want, I guarantee you all your days will be filled with sunshine and sunflowers, and it'll be light and bright and beautiful and amazing. So allow yourself to place a vision in your mind of what you want to achieve. Stand in a sunflower field. One of the things that's so amazing about sunflowers is that when they're growing, they choose to follow the trajectory of the sun during the day. If you've ever seen a time-lapse photography of sunflowers, you will see them constantly turning towards the sun. And because they do that, it creates this powerful stalk that is very, very strong. And their, the seed of their flower, become, the flower head becomes incredibly strong. But if you choose not to focus on the positive and you want to turn away and focus on the negative, then you choose to not be as strong as possibly the other sunflowers in the field. It's a very easy metaphor. There's so many different metaphors that we have in the world to remind us to focus on the light instead of to focus on the darkness. One of them is the sun that's in the sky. When it's in the sky, even if it's cloudy like a day like today, you know it's up there. You know it's behind the clouds. And why not? because it's never given us any reason to believe that it's not going to be there. It's a beacon that we can trust, that we can always know it's here, sending these amazing rays down upon us, washing us, bathing us in love. You can always rely that the sun is going to be in that sky. So I ask all of you, be a beacon. Be that beacon of light for others when they're going through a difficult time. Allow yourself to just love someone through it. Send them love from your heart. Help them move through these experiences because some of the people that are the people that are creating the biggest tragedies right now, the biggest problems in the world, if we send them love and they are able to feel their heart again and feel love again, and they actually start moving into their heart, then though, once those souls awaken, they become some of the greatest teachers. Because many of the times we have to get as far away from what we came here to do to remember and yearn for the light. So a lot of individuals are right at the edge of a cliff right now because what they're being asked 
is to start walking back towards their heart, walking back to what they came here to do. After uh, the event today or the service today, um, I will be out there uh, answering questions, but after this, I'm heading to Alaska, and I'm going to go with my husband, Peter, and we're going to go whale watching up in Anchorage. And I'm talking about this because I want to talk about how powerful it is to hold a positive vision and how this happened. A few years ago, when I started my walk of truth, where I said, I want to see everything, I want to hear everything, I want to feel everything, and I also want to be this beacon of light in the world, regardless of what everyone chooses, I'm going to choose the truth. I'm going to walk in integrity. I'm going to be the same person that you see standing before you here, or if I was all alone or just with one other person, I'm going to be the same person that I am. I'm going to be authentic. I'm not wishy-washy between the light and the shadow. I'm just going to choose light. Do I have days where I need to work on myself? Constantly, always. But I'm choosing to walk in the light. And when you choose to walk in the light, you automatically start raising your vibration. And I've spoken on this before, so I'll say this really briefly for others that haven't been here before. The easiest way I can explain vibration is a vibration if you are choosing the negative or you're actually choosing to really dispense fear here or dispense hatred or spite or you're judging others constantly where you're looking at what everyone else is doing instead of focusing on your own light. Mm -hmm. Then your vibration might sound like this. Mm -hmm. If you start extending yourself to others, beginning your walk of truth, meaning you're honest, you're honest with yourself, you're honest with others, you're honoring your journey, then you start notching up and you start I talk to angels all the time. They're constantly talking in my ear. I hear the high-pitched And so when you're raising your vibration, you'll start to sound, your vibration will start to sound like this. So a lot of individuals will say, you don't talk to angels, how would you do that? This is how I can just stand up here and speak because I'm just allowing myself to surrender to the light. It took a long process of that by going, oh my gosh, how am I gonna speak in front of people and not have notes, and what if I forget what I have to say, and all this kind of stuff. That's fear, that's the fear vibration. So once I really allowed myself the gift of saying, I'm just going to surrender, and I'm going to focus on love, I will have all the information that all the hearts who came here today want to hear. I will be able to dispense that information. But if I didn't surrender, then I might have my agenda written down to talk about instead of what your hearts collectively have wanted to know. What I'm talking about right now is different than most of the things that I bullet pointed and wrote down. So that's another reason why I just go, I'm just going to surrender and quit writing that stuff down on paper. So. Back to the orca whale. One of the reasons why I started connecting with orca whales is, in a dream I had a few years ago, an orca whale came to me and it said, just stand on my nose. And I stood on its nose and it shot me up out of the water and when I shot up out of the water, all the water was like coming off of it. I could just feel it in the dream. It was so amazing and alive. And a lot of these sacred animals, when they start to make their presence known to you, will come to you in dreams. I teach classes about animal wisdom too. So I love animals and angels. They all work together to help you get all this, these messages to let you know that you're adored and loved here. So when that animal orca whale started making its presence known to me, my husband, we then moved to Florida. We went to a store to get some furniture and there was this amazing wooden orca whale just sitting on a shelf, totally random. But I'm like, that's mine. That's my whale, I'm, I, I, that's mine. So I brought it up to the front to, so that we could add it to our order and pay for it and there was no price tag on it. And the guy that worked at the store said, well, I can't sell that to you because there's no price tag on it, we have to get it priced. I'm like, but this is my whale, I wanna buy it. Can you just call somebody, find out? So we had to leave the store because it wasn't priced and I said, I just wanna make sure that when our furniture arrives, can you put that on there, add that whale to our bill because I really want that whale. So 
flash forward, the furniture arrives, the guys were in a truck, they unload it, that whole thing went down. And, the, and I said to the guy as he's um, unloading the furniture, I'm like, hey, did a whale make it on the truck? He's like, yes, the whale is on the truck. I was told to put the whale in the truck. So I just wanted to make sure. So I have my whale in my beautiful possession in my office, and I'm looking on the invoice, and the whale is not priced on the invoice. And so this is where authenticity and integrity comes in. When you're bringing in a gift of the heart, don't muddy the waters by not acting out of integrity. Just because that individual didn't charge me for the whale doesn't mean that I am not obligated to pay for it because I'm working from my heart here. So I just want, I see the whole big picture. I'm like, I'm, I'm passing this test. I'm not getting something for free. This is, this is not his business. You know, he didn't own the business, so it's not his business to give someone something for free. So I called the store. And a woman answered, and she's like, yeah, I don't know how much that would be. I'll have to find out for you. I'm like, can you find out and call me back? So no one called me back. Here's another test. Are you going to still stay within your authenticity and integrity? So I waited another couple days, called another woman, and she's like, oh, yeah, that's um, $20. So I wrote out a check, and I wrote a note to the sales rep that sold it to me, and I said, this is to pay for the whale that was delivered. I just wanted to make sure that this goes towards that purchase. And so when we went to that store about a month and a half later, um, he actually mentioned that. He said, you know, that is pretty amazing that you paid for that. That, was, that really was exceptional that you, after you know, not getting billed, that you paid for that. So everything that we do when you're on that truth vibration, it makes a difference. When you always are sending love out to someone, it makes a difference. And the other way that it makes a difference is every time that you answer the call for a test of your heart and you say, yes, I'm not going to buy into any kind of illusion that I don't have to pay because it arrived at my house. When you do that, you raise your vibration even more. And so then a few months after that, my husband Peter is looking on these websites for discount um, cruises in Alaska things. And he's like, I don't know, do you want to do you want to go to Alaska? And I'm like, well. I don't know, I guess. And then I look on the website and they have orca whale watching. I'm like, I'm all in, I'm going. <laughs> so this is how when you're holding a vision and you're allowing yourself to connect with all things of the light and positive focus, you can create absolutely anything. And I'm telling you right now, if you focus on the positive and you focus on goodness and light, I guarantee you, you can create absolutely anything anything. And I talk about creating a, a powerful mantra and allowing that to be a powerful transmission that you send out to the earth that says, you know, I want this. I ask for this thing of goodness, whatever it is, fill in the blank, and it shall be so. Done. And it, and it will be. It's happened to me numerous times. I have many, many different stories about that. And the other thing also does happen for people on the negative. When you say, bless you, um, When you also focus on the negative. So a lot of people going around will go, oh man, I know just someday I'm gonna just fall down and break a bone. And they do. And I'm like, well, they just opened that door for you because you asked for it. So allow yourself that gift, again, of focusing on the positive. I wanna talk about the four agreements and the four agreements are written by Don Miguel Ruiz. And so this is very interesting because when I came in today um, and I felt compelled to be talking about this and then Eileen came up to me and she goes, oh, that's interesting, we were just talking about that. And this is how energy works. When you connect, connect with other people's hearts and you say, the, this is what people need to hear, then all of a sudden you get confirmation. You get synchronicities and confirmation to let you know that you're on the right track. So the four agreements are, don't take anything personal. Be impeccable with your word. Do your best. And what's the other one? I just forgot. Make no assumptions. Make no assumptions. Those, agree those four agreements are so powerful because when you make no assumptions, you don't fill in the blanks and you don't allow fear to creep in. And you also are on your walk of truth. Making no assumptions means that you, you, I know when someone's on their walk of truth because I don't hear this anymore. Well, I just assumed they'd take care of it. Well, I was just assuming that this would all work out. And all you have to do 
To stop assuming is just be a fact finder. Find the information, keep peeling back the layers until you have all the truth in front of you and then make those decisions based on that. And what that does is that helps you raise your vibration because you immediately eliminate drama. Drama comes in on that fear vibration when you have blanks left and then other people go, well, I think they wanted it this way. Well, let's just assume she wants it that way. And it's not any vision that you had. So be very clear on what you want. The other one that's so um, important about that four agreements is um, the do your best. Some days you're going, your best is going to be different than other days. And that's why you don't judge things. Allow yourself to be an observer of your journey and other people's journey. Because your best is going to be a lot different than someone else's best. And, but if you just do your best, that means if you made a mistake, you can honestly and easily say to yourself, I'm just going to do my best here. And I did my best. I made a mistake. I'm just going to clean it up and move forward. And one of the things that's happening a lot right now are people are all being asked to clean up a lot of stuff that either is going on right now or 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Even people are coming across past old friendships and you're like, wow, I ran into this person that I, the last time I saw them I had a huge argument with and all that. Clean it up. All you got to do is clean it up. Apologize. Let it go. I talk about live to forgive. And we, this is another illusion that we have been placed upon us here, is that if you forgive individuals, that you're allowing them to get away with something that they did to you. But when we move about the planet, and we take 100% responsibility for our own actions, I'm going to say that again. If you take 100% responsibility for your own actions, you will always know that you're doing your best. It's when we place the blame or look at other individuals or shame other individuals for doing something that perhaps we didn't do or we did do, we just moved beyond that and we can't believe that they're in that, but we moved beyond that five years ago. Do you see how silly that is? It's like all the stuff that people are doing out in the world, we are and have done in one shade or way of another. So when you can just go, everyone is on their own sacred journey, we're sharing them together, but I am 100% responsible for my journey. The other, uh, one of the other four agreements that I had mentioned was be impeccable with your word, and that goes back to authenticity and truth. This is a Toltec, T-O-L-T-E-C, this is a Native American Toltec teaching. And the Don Miguel Ruiz, who wrote this book, said, by this agreement alone, you can find the kingdom of heaven. Because when you are impeccable with your word, you are on that truth vibration. You want to see everything. You want to hear everything. You want to feel everything. You want to be responsible for your words and your actions and your thoughts. So a lot of times we can get in alignment with maybe our actions. We're not beating people up or whatever. But we're beating ourselves up in our mind with these thoughts that are going around and around on a cycle in our mind. And when you can allow yourself to snap your fingers and just go, that's not my story. That was something that was a part of me that I have moved beyond. And when and if you're going through a difficult time, you can also use uh, power words to allow yourself to keep moving. So say, for example, you are going through something that's really difficult. Instead of saying, I'm fighting the battle of my life. That, those are resistance words. Every word has energy. So when you're talking about fighting and battling, that's the fear vibration. That's not the love vibration. If you allow yourself then to say, I'm moving through this experience with wisdom and grace, can you see how that's lighter than I'm fighting the struggle or the battle of my life. You, you can't have it both ways. So you're either going to want a battle, and the people that are wanting a battle right now, you can really see how this is being sectioned off in the world. The battle people are really fighting battles with other people that want to fight battles. The people that want to focus on love, 
come over to my side right here. I'm here for you. I'm focusing on love. And I want to hang out with love, joyful, happy people. I'm very selective on the individuals that surround my space because I want to make sure that I stay uplifted. I will love individuals, obviously, that maybe choose the other experience, but I'm allowing them to choose that experience with souls that also want to choose that experience. So the individuals that are connecting with me are the individuals that really are choosing to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a difference here in this world. I absolutely believe in miracles. I believe that all things are, of goodness can change. When we talk about, I talk about a lot about um, animal symbology. So I want to talk a, about a couple different animal symbology. Number one, the orca whales, they're all about ancient wisdom, truth, duality. Any of those animals that are black and white, penguins, zebras, pandas, orca whales, they show you the difference between light and dark, yin and yang, harmony and balance. Those are wonderful animals if you want to just bring in their energy into your existence if you want to learn about harmony and balance. Turtles are a great example of heaven and earth. The dome is represented, the dome on their shell represents heaven. The shell underneath them represents earth. And I absolutely, 100% believe that I can experience heaven on earth. In fact, I am experiencing heaven on earth, even if everyone else wants a different experience. And the reason for that is because heaven, for me, resides in the light of my heart. If we all just go with the thought that once that group of people changes, or if my friend changes, or my sister changes, or this people at work change, then I'll be happy, how are you ever going to be happy? Because everyone is here to create different experiences and learn through different things. That's a whole other story about all these different creations for life lessons that help us awaken. But if you allow yourself to just sit there and look at what everybody else is doing, you will constantly be on that vibration where you feel like this instead of just allowing yourself to go out and greet the world every day and have amazing, magical experiences. I want to talk about walking through fire, and this will be bringing in another amazing animal. My friend Jill, I've talked about her before. Um, she is one of these amazing people that I've met, and she has really walked through fire in metaphorically and actually literally. Her son in 2009 was shot in Afghanistan and transitioned shortly thereafter. But she was able to see the blessing on the other side of that what could be viewed as a tragedy. But what it was, was something that was actually a gift of his heart that he always held in his heart since he was a young boy. He wanted to be an organ donor. He signed up for being an or organ donor. He was an army ranger. And when you sign those papers to be an army ranger, they say, what organs do you want to donate? And he said, any and all that are needed. So they actually gifted life to 60 plus people after he transitioned because of skin grafts for burn victims, corneas, muscles, bones, all sorts of things. So on the other side of this event that could be viewed as a tragedy became a blessing for so many people. Now on the sixth anniversary of this, uh, her son's transition, she has a memorial ride every year. And on this um, eve of the memorial ride, on the actual, excuse me, on the actual morning, um, and she lives here down in Rosemont, there was a lightning strike at her house. And she actually had people staying with her uh, because they were going to, it, this memorial ride is actually really big too. There's people that come in from all over the country riding their motorcycles, and there was a few of them staying at her house. So that morning, the lightning hit her house, a gas line, but the blessing on the other side of that, there was one of um, these individuals that were staying with Jill. He just decided to get up that morning and go work out for the first time in five years, and that is right where the lightning struck. So when Jill talks about walking through fire, she actually now can talk 
actually about walking through fire. And she can see the blessing on the other side of this because she's an inspirational speaker like myself. And she talks about seeing all the blessings on the other side of having these situations, these life-altering events. So the other thing that occurred after that is I had talked to Jill. Because the, the lightning hit the gas line, she wasn't able to gas. They could not turn off the gas line, so it kept burning. So everything in her house was basically touched by smoke or fire. But it became a blessing for her because she has wanted to get moving out of her town home and start moving in a new direction or even a new state. So she sees the blessing that all these things that she couldn't part with, and many of them that had to do with mementos or just a lot of different things, well, that's all been cleaned for her. Fire is a symbol for, for purification. So I asked Jill, because I've been in town for 10 days, I said, would it be possible for me to go over to your house with you and we could do a, a, a blessing of your home? Her house is now just down to the studs. There's absolutely nothing in there um, because they had to rebuild everything up. So I said, would it be possible, would you be open to us you know, saying a prayer, a gift for the next recipient of this house because she's going to be moving, and could we put symbolically some messages within these walls before they cover them? So we had a ceremony, said some prayers, put some hearts on the walls, and just said, there is only love here. There is absolutely only love. This is a new foundation. We're starting from ground up. And this is when we also, Jill and I, realized we were also connecting a lot with lion energy. Lion energy is all about courage and bravery and strength. And her and I separately have been getting a lot of lion messages. And then we started talking about it and we're like, wow, that is so amazing. So these amazing, powerful animals, this energy shows up in our lives to assist us through experiences. Animal wisdom, I call it, is symbolic. Every animal has wisdom within its being to assist you. So like lions are about courage and bravery and strength. Elephants are about ancient wisdom, grounding energy into the earth. They are such ancient, gentle beings that are also really helping us with community here and seeing that the, the bigger purpose. So all of these different amazing ways we can stay inspired when you just allow yourself to stay in your heart and look at the bigger picture. The, one of the other things that I'd like to talk about, about kind of walking through fire, what's going on right now, which would be really cool so you can all see this, is this was on the news and it has to do with sunflowers. There's a man named Don Jankwish and he's down in the Pacific Islands. Okay. And I guess that's my sign to stop talking. <laughs> I'm almost done. I didn't shut it off, I swear. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> That's a sign. I'll take that as a sign, people. Um, but the last, one of the, one of the last, <laughs> how about that, um, is this John Jenkwish, who's really an amazing individual. And it's, if you look it up on Google and you type in um, Babette's Seeds of Hope.com, this woman, this man loved his wife so much, and he said, I, she was going through a cancer, um, health issues with cancer, but he said she could light up a room when she came in. She would just be the sun that would light up the room. So she had transitioned, and what he did this year, along with other farmers down in Eau Claire, off of Highway 85, he planted 400 acres of sunflowers, and they, they line the, the highway uh, as you're going down the road. It's amazing. This is what's called a project of light. This is about seeing beyond this, if you just allow yourself to go, wow, this, you know, the love of my life is gone. Or you could say, now she's assisting me from the other side because this is what energy does, I guarantee you. She's flowing all this loving energy. And so what he's also doing after all these beautiful sunflowers inspire you, right? He's then taking the seeds and they're selling them for helping with cancer research. So that's how, what love does. It keeps going. It keeps giving. And you can always do that too. Okay? 
So I would love for you to, you know, as we end today, just to have you have some of these tools in your arsenal. So when you are walking about the planet and you start allowing yourself to, to start reaching backward to something that might have been a painful event, snap your fingers. Allow yourself to go, I am honoring my journey here. What is in the past, that's behind me. My eyes are going this way. That's why we don't have eyes on the back of our head, so we can just look forward to the future. There's so many amazing things that you can do to keep yourself lit up. Another thing that you can do is allow yourself to wear bright clothing. Wear oranges, wear yellows, wear bright greens, wear stuff that helps you raise your vibration. Surround yourself with animals or allow yourself to print out pictures of birds that are high vibrational. Hummingbirds, canaries, parrots, all those birds allow yourself to lift your vibration up. So there's so many different ways that you can know that you're loved and you're honored here and you're constantly being um, adored from the heavens. The last, last thing that I'll say as a tool is look up to the skies. There are so many ways that you can, I teach a class on cloud divination and cloud divination just means look up at the sky, you can ask a question and see different shapes in the clouds to help give you confirmation that you're loved. You can all of a sudden look up and there's a huge heart cloud, you know, floating by. One of these other tools that you can do to help you raise your vibration and know that you're loved here is just whether you believe it or not, all you got to do is just say, angels, loved ones, whoever you want, universe, God, whatever you want to call your higher power, say, just bombard me with messages that I'm adored here. And you'll start seeing heart-shaped everything. Even when Jesus comes knocking on the door, open it, okay? <laughs> open it! Okay, so after this, I'll be out there. I'd love to talk with you and answer any questions, if you have any questions for me. And um, that's all i got to say. Okay, I thought uh, I've done this meditation or kind of a similar one to this when I was here before, but it's so appropriate because I just kept seeing sunflowers as I was talking to all of you today. So I would love for you to all just close your eyes for a moment and let's just take ourselves to a sunflower field. And just imagine that you're standing in a 400 acre sunflower field and as far as your eyes can see, all you can see is light and love and smell the buttery smell that comes from those amazing sunflowers and feel the powerful stalks that surround you and know that you're safe and you are complete and you are a spark of the divine. And you can absolutely feel this 100% in every ounce of your being. That anything that's happened to you here that is not of love is actually an illusion, and that's the illusion of fear. So I ask that you just allow yourself to bathe yourself in the warmth of these sunflowers, and you can just place the silent intention that you are ready to let go or release anything that does not serve your soul and is not the truth of who you are and who you came here to be. You are a beacon of light in this world and you can shine that forth for all to see. Each and every one of us can make a positive difference here. We can change the world. One person can change the world because it's always begun this way, with one vision, one heart, and one light. And those are the lights then that join other hearts and other lights. And that is why light and love expand and move around the earth, and that's how we change the world. So whenever you feel doubt or fear, place your energy in a sunflower field and just know that you are adored and you're safe or look up to the sky and see that amazing light and know that everything is as just as it should be because we are perfect in this moment. Amen. <laughs>